<laughs> oh, oh no! I'm using a 5 DPI, DPI, blah, blah, blah. Look how cute you are. Oh, hi, Bubba's. Hi. Mm, you're so cute. Like, see everything good. Mm. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. If we haven't met yet, I'm Trish. And if we have met, welcome back. You're probably a subscriber. You guys are my people and I'm excited to see you. Please tell me, what are you working on? What's going on in your corner of the world? The world is crazy. It doesn't seem to want to settle down. <sighs> I don't know, it's crazy around here. So it is, we're on the cusp of fall here in Michigan. And John and I don't really camp as much during the middle of summer because we feel like this is like the best time to be home at our house. The best time of year is summer because we have a pool and we have a backyard that kind of sold us on this house and we love it and we want to spend time in it. So now that pool season is coming to an end, we're going to start camping. And I really need a mat for the camper in front of the kitchen sink. So if you've been with me for more than a year, you know that we renovated a 90s, hideous 90s camper. During the renovation, I bought denim from a place called Nick of Time Textiles. If you're looking for denim, they have a lot of options and they have a lot of colors and stuff, and also weights. So weight goes by, I, I think, in denim it's like yards per pound or something like that i don't know it doesn't i'm not fully really under i don't know i used a heavier weight denim from nick of time textiles to make a cover for the jackknife sofa it's not perfect but it's kind of like one of those things where it was either that or buy a new one and i didn't really want to mess with that and also i didn't want to like have to try to do the research to find out where to buy a good one so I made a cover for it out of a darker denim and I still have some so I'm going to use some of that in the rug and then I also have some jeans as both of us wear out jeans I keep them I don't know why but I don't really have that affinity with any other type of clothing but with jeans I always want to keep them and I put them in my fabric stash so it's going to be made from a combination of old jeans that I've saved and um, the material that's left over from the couch so that it coordinates with the space. You guys have heard me mention them like a million times. I'm using a 5 DPI heddle and I'm warping a 16 inch width plus one warp end on my heddles. I've tried this once before and it was a pretty bad failure in my opinion but I hopefully have learned some things since then and we're gonna try it again. I'm kind of scared that it's gonna be that it's not gonna work but I'm gonna show you either way and guys so excite stuff on the weaving front I've been looking at floor looms a little bit I always look at used ones because brand new ones are so expensive and also I'm not a hundred percent sure that I feel comfortable that I have the space in my house for a floor loom it's a really completely it's like a whole different proposition from a rigid head loom. I know they're both, they both produce something woven, but it's to me in my brain, it's a little bit like knitting by hand or using a knitting machine. They're actually two completely different hobbies. I don't know, I'm, I'm looking at them. It might not happen. Maybe it will. Maybe you guys don't even wanna know about this. I don't know. So let's do this. I need to get this done because I really wanna weave another set of towels. It's gonna to be an autumn themed set of towels. And then after that, I really wanna do a Christmas set. I'm thinking about then doing like holiday towel series. I don't know, how do you guys feel about that? Talk to me about your feelings. Let's get weaving. All right, so I'm all set up. I have eight pegs on either side of the center on my warping bar. And I'm gonna use this, um, this color of warp. It is like, I don't know, khaki maybe. And I figured that that was the most similar to the color that they use when they sew denim sometimes for jeans. So, or when they top stitch. So 
because I also have gray, but you don't really see that as often. So I'm going to use this one. Drop this guy down. Now my wing nuts. You've seen me do it a million times now. Okay. The last one. And then I like to use a warp separator always. I'm gonna sew together the strips for the weft on this rug that I'm making. Sorry about the bag crinkle. They're all in here. And I'm gonna just pull them out randomly and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. You're gonna go end to end right on that corner. Does that make sense? Yes. And then when you open them, they will open up like this, but you won't have seam bulk that's going straight across all in one place, the seam bulk will be spread out. I've got it like this. I'm gonna sew from this corner to this corner. So I think you can see it here. The corner that's just uh, like what I would call the free corner with no strip hanging off it is the one that is cut, gone across. And then what I'm gonna do is trim this. It doesn't have to be too super close on the diagonal. The same way you make bias tape. Okay, so I left myself a, a seam allowance. I'm not too worried about it. I just don't want it to be too bulky in one spot. And then you make a strip. But you make a strip with the bulk of the seam spread out over this much space instead of just like this big, humpy, bulky thing right there. So I'm not even gonna press these or anything. I'm just gonna make a whole bunch and then I'm gonna wind them onto a shuttle. Okay, you guys are probably gonna laugh at me. I had some old linen still on a shuttle and that's what I used to even out my warp. I just wove a couple of rows. It's probably like eight, or eight rows or so, but it's like super fine linen. You can probably barely see it. To even out my warp and um, gonna just start 
And I haven't exactly fin figured out yet how I'm going to finish the ends of this, but I hate fringe and I'm definitely going to hate fringe that is made of this stuff. So it will not be fringe. I just haven't figured it out yet, but we're going to figure it out together, I guess. I want to leave myself like a selvage edge that's going to be much finer than the denim so that I can make a decision at that point. So I'm going to do somewhere between, between 10 and 20 rows just woven with the rug warp. All right, so that's 20 rows and I'm good with that. And I'm actually going to pack it really quickly. So guys, I bought this package of combs at the dollar store at Dollar General for this purpose. So my plan is to use one of these. <laughs> these are some flimsy combs. So we'll see how it goes to pack this on. So I just want to pack it pretty straight and pretty tight. So I'm going to keep this close to me because I'm going to use this for packing the denim and I'm going to get started now. guys so far it's exactly what I was trying to do okay I've finished my first shuttle and I wanted to show you guys just like what I'm gonna do to start a new um, I don't want to call it a thread but you know what I mean I'm gonna cut this sorry I just dropped my shuttle <laughs> I'm gonna cut this at a long angle and then I'm gonna do the same for the next strip and overlap them and just tightly pack them in together so this is like totally the wrong scissors for this, but I'm doing it. Ah. Just like this. See, it's in the warp. It's trapped in there. I am gonna go ahead and beat it just a tiny bit, not hard, just to push it down. And then the next one will be beveled and will fit across there and hopefully that'll trap them in and keep them kind of straight. So I gotta go film my shuttle, you guys, but I am so in love with this rug so far. Okay, so I'm all done. I've got 20 rows on here. What I'm actually going to do is pack this on again because I can see some gaps and I don't want that. So first I'm going to go through here, pack it down. So what I'm going to do, this is an experiment, is um, I'm going to cut across as I knot this warp right up tight against the weft. So I'm going to cut the first two strings, like give myself a lot of room. And then I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna go left over right 
And then right over left, so I'm gonna square knot that. Okay, tight like that. But then I'm gonna take whatever one comes up towards like the rest of the warp and cut just one. Actually, I want more length. And do the same thing. So left over right, right over left. Okay, so then I have the one I just cut towards the next one. I'm just gonna go across and do the same thing all the way down. What I'm feeling like I wanna do is just bend this over. Look how good that looks. And then I'll sew it from the back. I'm feeling like that's gonna make a really nice, neat edge on the edge of this rug. Okay, so I'm all set. I still have to knot the other end. So I'm gonna take off the waist yarn and then go ahead and knot these all the way across. And then I'm gonna come back and show you guys how I decide to finish it. So now you can see, I took that end and I wove it under the warp. What I'm planning on doing is taking the selvage edge and I'm going to fold it over and just use a really sharp needle, but it's a big needle, and the rug warp, and I'm gonna tack down the knot edge underneath so it'll be kind of like a rolled edge. It'll look like this from the correct side. So this is how the right side looks and I'm actually really happy with how how that turned out so I'm gonna do the other side and then I'll be done I can't believe how easy this was and how long I put it off because I didn't know if I was gonna be happy with it but I love it can't actually put it in our camper because it's packed for us to camp this weekend and it is so cute I'm gonna be doing this again. I'm gonna look for places now, you know, to put little rugs because this is so cute and I can do quite a bit bigger on my loom. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope it helps somebody and I will talk to you soon.